This is Concept E Classes and today we will deal with Chapter 16 of Class 8 Science, Light. So in this chapter, first we will see what is light and how we can see objects, then about the laws of reflection and the types of reflection which is regular and diffuse reflection. Then we will deal with how the reflected light can be reflected again and also about multiple images and a toy called as kaleidoscope. Then we will study about the main source of light which is the sunlight and we see things only when the light enters our eye. So we will study about eyes and what is inside our eyes. Then how we could take care of the eyes. Then we will see about visually impaired persons and finally and briefly we will deal about the Brady system. So let's begin the chapter. Light is a very important aspect of our life. We cannot do anything without light. Light is a type of energy that makes it possible for us to see the world around us. It is everything that we see. For example, the mountains, the rivers, the plants, trees, chairs, people and many things around us can be seen with the help of a light. Can we see anything in a dark room? No. So light is a form of energy that helps us to see all the things around us. Now the definition of light is it is a form of electromagnetic radiation that can be detected by the human eye. So let's see how we can see with the help of light. So how can we see the things around us? We are able to see with the help of our eyes. But can we see objects in the dark? No. Hence we can say that the eyes alone cannot see an object. Only when the light from an object enters into our eye, then only we are able to see the object. For example, the main source of light is the sun. And when the sunlight falls on the flower, the flower reflects the sunlight in all direction. And when the sunlight reflected by the flower enters into our eyes, we are able to see the sunflower. Now the light may have been emitted by the object or may have been reflected by it. And when that light reaches our eyes, we are able to see the object. Now the next question that comes to our mind is, do we see all objects due to reflected light? Yes, nearly everything you see around is due to the reflected light. Now some objects which shine in the light of other objects are called as illuminated objects or non-luminous objects. That is, some objects, they do not have their own light. They reflect the light from other objects. For example, the moon. The moon, it receives the light from the sun and it reflects So that's how we are able to see the moon. Another example of non-luminous objects are plants, trees, ground. They all reflect the light from the sun or any other sources of light. Now those objects which emit their own light are called as luminous objects. For example, the sun, the fire, flame of a candle, an electric lamp. The lights fall on the eyes. That is how we are able to see them. So these are some of the examples of luminous objects. So we saw that we can see an object when that object either emits or reflects light. So let's see more about reflection. Now here we can see the reflection of the moon in the water. Here we can see the baby is playing with his own reflection. So let's see what it is. If we throw a light from a torch or a laser onto a small piece of mirror, what can be observed? When that ray of light strikes the mirror, the ray of light is reflected in another direction. So this process is termed as the reflection of light. The reflection of light occurs when a ray of light approaches a smooth surface and it bounces back. Now the light ray which strikes any surface is termed as the incident ray and the ray that comes back from the surface after reflection is known as the reflected ray. Now the line which is perpendicular or which is at right angle to the surface of the mirror at the point of incidence is termed as the normal. Now the angle between the normal and that of the incident ray 
is called as the angle of incidence and the angle between the normal and the reflected ray is known as the angle of reflection. So now let's see what are the laws of reflection. Laws of reflection. The first law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. That is if the angle of incidence is 60 then the angle of reflection is also 60. But the second law states that the incident ray, the normal at the point of incidence and the reflected ray they all lie in the same plane. That is here if we consider the entire sheet of paper as a plane then the incident ray normal at the point of incidence and the reflected ray they all lie in the plane of paper. So that are the two laws of reflection. So we saw that when a ray of light falls on a mirror it reflects back. Now when we stand in the front of a mirror what happens? We can see our own reflection. So let's see and understand a little more about how an image is formed in a plane mirror. So in order to understand that let's consider a small activity. Now a source of light O is placed in front of a plane mirror PQ. Two rays of light OA and OC are incident on it. Now draw normals to the surface of the mirror PQ at the point A and C. Then draw the reflected rays at the point A and C and let's call them AB and CD. Now extend these reflected rays further and if we extend them backwards do they meet? Yes they meet at a point and let's mark that point as I. Now for a viewers I at E the reflected rays appear to come from the point I. Now since the reflected rays they do not actually meet at the point I but only appear to do so such an image is termed as the virtual image. Okay, So here a virtual image of the point O is formed at I. Hence the reflection of the image O is made on the other side of the mirror at the point I. Here itself we can see the man he is standing in front of the mirror. Here also the incident ray is these two and it is reflected back. So if we extend them a virtual image is formed. So this virtual image is actually the reflection of the image. Now if we consider this virtual image we can notice two three features. Here the image is upright, it's erect and it's not upside down. It is the same size of the object and here we can see that this image it cannot be obtained on a screen. It is formed behind the mirror. Now if we notice the image formed by the mirror the left of the object appears on the right and the right appears on the left. That is if we stand in the front of the mirror your left hand becomes the right hand of your image. Now this effect produced by the plane mirror in reversing images from left to right is termed as lateral inversion. So the virtual image that is formed by the mirror is laterally inverted. So we saw what is reflection that is when a ray of light falls on a smooth surface it bounces back. Now let's see the types of reflection. There are two types of reflection regular reflection and irregular reflection. The reflection from a smooth surface like a mirror is called as ref regular reflection. That is here what happens is that when the rays of light falls on a smooth surface they are reflected parallelly. Hence this type of reflection is termed as regular reflection or specular reflection and here we are able to see a clear reflection. For example the mirrors, the metal, the polished surfaces these all are the examples of regular reflection. Now when all the rays of light they fall on irregular surfaces what happens? The light rays they do not reflect parallelly they reflect in different directions. Hence this type of reflection is termed as irregular reflection or diffused reflection. Most of the objects that we see around us exhibit this diffuse reflection because of the tiny imperfections on the surface. Or we can also consider a piece of a paper. Here the paper may look smooth but if we look it at a microscope 
microscopic level we can see that they are tiny fibers which make it rough so this type of reflection is termed as irregular or diffused reflection here is an example of specular and diffused reflection here in specular reflection in still water we are able to see the image of this building but here what happens in the disturbed water that is the irregular surfaces the reflection is not clear and this is an example of diffused reflection now can this reflected light be reflected again so in order to understand that let's take a real time example if we have visited a hairdresser you might have noticed that they make a sit in front of a mirror and then after your haircut is complete he or she holds a mirror behind you to show you how the hair has been cut now have you understood why we are able to see the hair at the back of your head that is mainly because the light is reflected from the hair to the small mirror and then this light is again reflected to the main mirror that's how we are able to see the back of a hair so when two mirrors are placed opposite to each other the first mirror it reflects light that falls on its surface when this reflected light falls on the second mirror this mirror also reflects this light the periscope which is used in submarines tanks they also makes use of two plane mirrors periscope is actually a instrument uh, which is typically used in a submerged submarine or behind a high obstacle where the observer can see things that are out of sight okay so here also they use two plane mirrors that is here is the object the object reflects light and the light is reflected on the first mirror now this reflected ray from one mirror it act as a incident ray on the other mirror and then it reflects back and that's how we are able to see the object so from this we can say that a reflected light can be reflected again now the next topic that we are going to study is multiple images we know that a plane mirror it forms a single image of an object now what happens if two plane mirrors are used in a combination if two mirrors are kept close to each other at any angle we can see multiple images for example here here the two mirrors are placed at 45 degree angle we can see about seven reflections are formed here at 60 degree five reflections are formed at 72 degree four reflections are formed and when two mirrors are at 90 degree or at right angle three lift reflections are formed when two mirrors are set at an angle of 120 degree two reflections are made and when two mirrors are in straight line it reflect an object only once and when two or more mirrors are placed parallel to each other the number of reflections is infinite infinite and place you one mirror at a slight angle we can see that the reflection curves see there's a curve in the reflection so from all this we can see that by using two or more mirrors we can increase the number of reflections thereby getting multiple images but what we see depends on where we stand and where we place an object in other words we can say that it mainly depends on the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection now this idea of multiple images is used in a toy called as calioroscope so calioroscope is actually a toy consisting of a tube containing a mirrors and pieces of colored glass and whose reflections produces changing patterns uh, when the tube is rotated so the idea of uh, the number of images formed by the mirrors placed at an angle is used here so let's see how uh, we can make a calioroscope by ourselves now get three rectangular mirror strips each about uh, 15 cm long and 4 cm wide now join them together to form a prism now fix this arrangement of mirrors in a circular board or a tube which is longer than the strips now close one end of the tube by a cardboard disc having a hole in the center to make the disc durable a uh, paste a piece of transparent plastic sheet under the cardboard disc 
Now at the other end of the cardboard, touching the mirrors, now fix a circular glass plate and place on this glass plate several small pieces of colored glass, say for example broken pieces of colored bangles. Now close this end of the tube by a ground glass plate. Now allow enough spaces for the colored pieces to move around. Now if you now your coloroscope is ready and if you peep through the coloroscope through the hole you will be able to see a variety of patterns like this in the tube and an interesting feature of this coloroscope is that you will be never able to see the same pattern again. So this is how we make a simple coloroscope. Now the next topic is sunlight. Is it white or colored? Now the sunlight it splits into seven colors namely violet, indigo, blue, green, orange and red. We already have studied it in our smaller classes about Vibjor and we can observe the splitting using a prism. Now if a narrow beam of sunlight it falls on one side of the prism we can see that the reflected light has several colors. So here the prism it splits the white light into many colors. So this splitting of white light into many colors is called as the dispersion of light and a rainbow it is a natural phenomenon which shows this dispersion. Hence if we try mixing all these colors uh, together we can get one light which is the white light. Hence sunlight is called as the white light. Now the next main topic of this chapter is what is inside our eyes. We see things only when the light coming from them enter into our eyes. So eyes is one of our most important sense organs. It is therefore important to understand its structure and working. So let's see what is inside our eyes. The eye has a roughly spherical shape. The outer coating of the eye is white and it is tough so that it can protect the interior from accidents. Okay. Now let's see what all are the parts of the eye. The different parts of the eyes are cornea, iris, pupil, lens, ciliary muscles, retina, nerve cells, optic nerve, and blind spot. So let's discuss each of these parts briefly. So let's see what is cornea. The transparent front part of the eye is termed as cornea. So this transparent part is termed as cornea. The light enters through the cornea. It acts like a window. Now let's see what is iris. Now behind the cornea there is a dark muscular structure called as this iris. So this is the iris. Now iris is that part of the eye which gives it a distinctive color. That is the color of iris is different for different people. Some people have black eyes, some have brown, some have blue. So the iris is the colored part of the eye. And the iris controls the amount of light entering into the eye. So you will understand this point in the next slide. Now let's see what is pupil. Now in the iris there is a small opening called as pupil and the size of the pupil is controlled by the iris. That is what happens here is that if the light is very bright then the iris it reduces the size of the pupil. That is the pupil it contracts so that less light enter into the eyes. Now if the light is dim the pupil dilates or the iris it increases the sizes of the pupil so that more light enters into the eye. The next part is the lens. Now behind the pupil of the eye there is a lens which is thicker in the center that is it is a convex lens. So we already know that most of the focusing of the light is done by the cornea but the lens it allows the eye to focus on near and distant objects. That is a lens it focuses the light on the back of the eye that is on the retina. We will study about the retina in the following slides. The next part is the ciliary muscle. Now the ciliary muscles it surrounds the lens and helps in changing the shape of the lens as well as helps the lens to focus. That is it holds the lens 
and it adjusts the focal length of the lens now the ciliary muscles it relaxes to flatten it to image distant object and it contracts to thicken the lens to image close up objects so in short we can say that the ciliary muscles it holds the lens and it adjusts the focal length of the lens now let's see what is retina now the lens it focuses a light on the back of the eye on a layer called as retina and the retina it contains several nerve cells now when the light strikes on the retina two types of cells are activated they are called as the cones and the roots now the cones are sensitive to bright light and they sense color so they mainly responsible uh, for color vision and they respond to colors now roots they are sensitive to dim light that is the roots help to form images under dim conditions hence we can say that uh, this these uh, root cells they respond to the intensity of the light now let's see what are optic nerve now the sensations which are felt by the nerve cells are transmitted to the brain through the optic nerve so we can say that it is a optic nerve that connects the eye to the brain now what is a blind spot at the junction of the optic nerve and retina there are no sensory cells so no vision is possible at that spot and this spot is called as the blind spot that is it is a point on the retina where no image is formed so let us understand more about this blind spot through an activity now make a round mark and a cross on a sheet of paper and the distance between the two marks may be about 6 to 8 cm now hold the sheet of paper at an arm's length from the eye and close your left eye and look continuously at the cross mark now move the sheet slowly towards you and keep your eyes on the cross we can notice that the round mark disappear at some point so this disappearance of the round mark it shows that there is a point on the retina which cannot send messages to the brain when the light falls on it so from this demonstration we can understand that the blind spot is a point on the retina where no image is formed now the impression of an image it does not vanish immediately from the retina it stays there for about 1/16th of a second so if still images of a moving object are flashed on an eye at a rate faster than 16 per second then the eye thinks that this object is moving for example the movies that we see they are actually a number of separate pictures in a proper sequence and they are made to move across the eye at the rate of 24 pictures per second that is which is faster than 16 per second hence we see a moving picture so we saw the different parts of the eye and how the impression of an image stays on the retina now let's see some of the other aspects of human eyes now the nature have provided eyes with eyelids to prevent any object from entering the eye so these are the eyelids and the eyelids also shut out the light when not required now the eyes they also helps to clearly see distant objects as well as objects nearby the minimum distance at which an eye can see object it varies with age but the most comfortable distance at which one can read with a normal eye is about 25 cm now there are some uh, vision problems that occur in most of the people so let's see some of them some persons can see objects close to them clearly but they cannot see distant objects so that type of defect is termed as myopia and in some cases the person they are able to see far away objects but the near objects are blurry and that type of defect is called as hypermetropia so with suitable corrective lenses these defects of eyes can be corrected for example in the case of uh, myopia or near sightedness we could use a concave lens in the case of hypermetropia we could use a convex lens and astigmatism is also a type of defect which causes blurry fuzzy and distorted vision so there we use a toric lenses so with suitable corrective lenses the defects of eyes can be corrected now sometimes in old age 
the eyes becomes foggy and it is due to the eye lenses it becomes cloudy when this happens we say that the persons are said to have cataract and there is a loss of vision at that time and it sometimes becomes extremely severe so we can treat this by replacing this opaque lens with a new artificial lens hence we saw what are the different parts of eyes then other aspects of human eyes and some of the common vision defects or vision problems so let's see how we can take care of our eyes it is necessary therefore to take proper care of your eyes if there is any problem you should go and consult an eye specialist and you should have a regular checkup if advised use suitable spectacles too little or too much light is bad for your eyes insufficient light may cause us eye strain and headaches and too much light like that of the sun it can injure the retina so do not look directly at sun or any powerful light now never rub your eyes if particles of dust go into your eyes simply wash your eyes with clean water and if there is no improvement go to the doctor always read at a normal distance for vision do not read by bringing the book too close to your eyes and keep it don't keep it too far and finally have a balanced diet now lack of vitamin a in the food it will responsible for many eye troubles like most common of that is the night blindness hence we should include a diet having raw carrots broccoli green vegetables cod liver oil which are rich in vitamin a similarly eggs milk curd cheese butter they also are rich in vitamin a hence it is important to have a balanced diet and take proper care of your eyes so we studied about the human eye and what is inside our eye now let's understand about animal eyes briefly just to simply know what all are the different types of eyes that are seen in animals so in the crabs the eyes of the crabs are quite small but they enable the crab to look all around so the crab can sense even if the enemy approaches from behind now butterflies they have large eyes they seem to be made up of thousands of little eyes and they can see not only in the front and the sides but also the back as well now a night bird like an owl here if you notice the eyes we can see that they have a large pupil that allows more light into enter into it so the retina here it has a large number of rods and only a few number of cones and here in day birds like a kite or a eagle we can see that uh, they have more cones and a fewer rows so this is just uh, understand what are the different types of eyes found in animals now let's study about visually impaired persons and how they can read and write now some persons including children can be visually impaired now what do you mean by visually impaired it means that they have a very limited vision to see things they may either be partially blind or sometimes completely blind now some people they cannot see at all since birth but as some persons they may lose their eyesight because of uh, disease or an injury so how do these persons then identify or communicate with others such persons they can identify things by touching and listening to the voices more carefully so they develop their other senses more sharply and there are additional resources that can enable them to develop their capabilities like non optical aids and optical aids now the non optical aids they are not directly related to sight they include visual aids which can magnify words which can provide suitable light and material at proper distance they include tactual aids which include braille writer's aids and stylus then the non optical aid includes auditor aids which include cassettes tape recorders talking books etc and electronic aids it include talking calculators and computers now the optical aid it mainly includes bifocal lens contact lenses tinted lenses magnifiers and telescopic aids and while the lens combinations are used to rectify visual limitations the telescopic aids are available to view chalkboard and 
class demonstrations so with the help of this aids the visually impaired persons can uh, develop their capabilities to read and write so let's study one such non optical aid called as the braille so let's see what is a braille system now the most popular resource for visually challenged persons is the braille and it was developed by louis braille in 1821 for the visually challenged persons to read and write there is a braille code for common languages mathematics and scientific notation and the visually impaired persons they learn the braille system by beginning with letters then special characters and then letter combinations and the braille text they can be produced by hand or by a machine now this is the braille alphabet let's see more about this braille alphabets now the braille system has 63 dot patterns or characters each character it represent a letter see each character or a combination of letters a common word or a grammatical sign now the dots are arranged in cells see the dots are arranged in cells of two vertical rows of three dots each so here we can see the patterns of the dot to represent some of the english letters now these patterns when embossed on braille sheets they help the visually challenged person to recognize the words by touching so if they touch this point at that braille system they can understand that it is written u very so these are some of the combinations that can be found in the braille system now to make them easier to touch the dots are raised slightly so this is briefly to understand what a braille system is so that's all for chapter 16 of class 8 science light tune in soon for the next session thank you so much may god bless you all take care and bye bye